Hi, Tim Clapham here from HelloLux.com with another short tutorial for Cinema 4D. And in this tutorial, we're going to be building um, a really simple conveyor using Dynamics. So to follow along, you will need to be using Release 12 um, Studio um, or above. I'm actually using Release 14, but it should be good for 12, 13 and 14. And of course, you need to have um, Dynamics. First thing I'm going to do is come to the primitives menu and add in a cylinder um, with the cylinder selected let's just set that to be uh, kind of gray so you can see what's going on I'm also going to set the display to quick shading lines so we can see the geometry with the cylinder selected choose object let's set the height to be 500 and the rotation segments to be say 12 because um, so we're going to have quite a few of these so if we reduce the number of segments then our scene will be a little bit more efficient I'm going to set the orientation to be plus Z. Now, what I'm going to do is create multiple copies of this, and I'm going to use a connector and a motor so that we can make sure that our cylinders are all turning. Um, and to, to do this, what we need to do is group everything into a null. So if we hold down the Alt key, and let's add in a null object, and the next thing to do is to hold down Shift, come up to the Simulate menu, choose dynamics and add in a connector. I'm going to select the null again, come to the simulate menu, dynamics and this time add in a motor. So now we've got a motor, a connector, a cylinder all grouped in a null object. The thing is none of these objects are going to do anything at the moment because we haven't added any dynamics. Select the cylinder object, choose tags, come down to simulation and add a rigid body tag. So now we have our cylinder as a dynamic rigid body and if we press play you can see that gravity takes over and our object just drops into infinity. Now we could just add our motor here um, and what will happen is our cylinder will then be driven by the motor, depending on the settings that we use, but it's still going to drop down. We could add in some floor, and then what would happen is our motor would drive our cylinder, and if we had it as an angular motor, um, our cylinder would rotate around, and it would roll along the floor, and it's a bit like making a wheel. We want to hold it in, this, in one place. We don't want it to move, so this is why we've added in the connector. And the connectors have various different types depending on how you like the objects to be connected together and depending on what sort of movement, how you want to restrict it, whether you want it to slide, rotate, or like a ball socket, those kind of things. Defaults to type hinge, I'm going to leave it set to hinge. I'm going to just grab my cylinder and just drop this into object B. And I'm going to leave object A empty, which means that basically the cylinder is going to hold this, uh, sorry, the connector is going to hold this cylinder in place. So if I press play now, doesn't get much more exciting than this. Nothing happens. And the reason for that is because even though it's a dynamic object, this, the connector is now holding that cylinder in place. If we come up to the motor, make sure this is set to angular. And now I'm going to grab the cylinder and drop that into object B. Now the mode that we want to use here is regulate speed. We want the speed to be the same all the way through. So it's going to kind of accelerate until it reaches that speed. And then once it reaches a certain speed, um, it will try to maintain that speed. Let's leave these settings as they are for now. If we press play, you can see that the cylinder spins around. There's a little bit of an optical illusion there at the beginning, I think. It goes a little bit jerky as it accelerates to the right speed. Um, and we can adjust this, let's we say set this to 500. And there you go, and you can see how that works. And you can also reduce the torque if you wish. Anyway, let's uh, leave those until we have a working setup and we can adjust those if we think um, things are happening a bit too fast. So let's come back, select our null object, hold down the Alt key, and if we then add in a cloner, the selected object will become a child of the new object. So in other words, the null becomes the child of the cloner. Now if we press play, you can see that um, everything's looking a little bit crazy. It's not really working as expected. And um, the reason for that is because all of the cylinders are dynamic, but they're actually intersecting each other. So they're trying to kind of force themselves away. But because we've got a connector there holding them in place, they can't move. So they're kind of fighting each other. So the system becomes a little bit unstable um, and, uh, you know, everything looks kind of crazy and sporadic. No problem. We're not going to leave it set up like that. We First of all, we don't really want to move it on Y. So let's set that to zero. What we want to do is move it on X. So let's just increase that. Um, I'm going to set that to maybe 140. So we've got a little bit of a gap between them. 
And let's increase the count to say 40. Press H to frame our setup. And there you go. And you can see there are all of our rollers. And if we press play now, you can see they're all being driven by that motor. Okay, so the other thing that we might want to do is just to maybe um, hold down Alt and just scrub this step rotation. Might be a bit more interesting if our conveyor goes around a corner. Now, of course, we could have added in a spline and cloned along a spline um, if you want uh, more of an interesting shape. Um, but there we go. So let's just switch to our top view and press H to frame that. Um, maybe we could just increase the uh, count of this so we kind of have a quarter of a circle. And I'm going to add in some walls around the edge. So if we do drop some luggage or something onto here, um, it won't all roll off the sides. Let's add in a circle spline. And I'm going to just press T to scale this up. Let's just press E to switch to my move tool. Bring it up to here. And let's just scale that up. Something like so. And if we set this to ring as well, and then we can increase the inner radius. I'm just going to match it at the bottom here to start with. Um, and then I'm going to select my cloner and hold down the Alt key and let's just adjust that angle just so they kind of sit within that um, in that ring shape. If we grab our circle spline now and just press C to make that editable and switch to points mode, I'm going to just select these points here and here and delete those and I'm going to uncheck close spline. Now if we select say these two points here and we right click and choose set first point, you can see that we now have um, our two splines or our one spline with two segments following the shape of our cloner. With that circle spline still selected, let's hold down the Alt key and um, add in a sweep. And if we hold down Shift and add in a rectangle, let's switch back to our perspective view so it's not quite how we um, want it to be. Um, if so with the rectangle selected, let's change the plane to X, Y and we can see that it's now starting to look OK. A um, little bit big, obviously. So what we want to do is just change the size of this rectangle. So I'm going to set that to 30 by 150. I'm also going to adjust the um, angle at the bottom here because you can see that we've got quite big segments. Um, if we adjust the angle here, then we'll increase the number of intermediate points in our spline. Um, a wrong spline, sorry, on the circle spline. Let's set that to two, and there we go. And you can see that we now increase the number of um, segments, making it slightly smoother. Not really worrying too much about the aesthetic here anyway. And you can see that um, maybe my circle is a little bit big. Um, you know, there's a bit of a big gap there, but no worries. So there we have our simple conveyor. All we need to do now is drop some objects on there and see how it works. As you can see, I pasted in um, the Lux letters, uh, just as extrudes. Now, of course, we need to um, make these rigid body as well. So I'm just going to select them, choose Tags, Simulation, Rigid Body. And um, I think we can leave everything as it is, except for the collision. What I want to do um, is I'm just going to set the shape to actually just be box. So it's just we'll calculate a little bit quicker. And now if we press play, let's see what happens. And there we go. And you can see that the Lux letters are indeed being pulled along. Now they're kind of slipping a little bit. It actually looks like the rollers are going the other way, but that's just an optical illusion. Um, because of the speed that they're running at. If we select the motor, let's set that to say 800. Um, and now you can see they hardly look like they're moving, um, which is interesting. But what we can do is we can uh, select the dynamics body tag on the cylinder and let's increase the friction. So let's set that to say maybe 250. So they don't slip quite so much. And we can do the same on our letters we can set the friction here to be say 100 and there you go and you can see that now they drop down and they land on that conveyor and they're pulled around with all of the um, cylinders as they turn pretty cool so there we go 
Uh, nice, easy setup, very quick and simple, and hopefully um, gives you some idea of how you can use connectors, motors, and dynamics in um, maybe not quite such an obvious way. If you're looking for more tutorials for Cinema 4D, After Effects, maybe some trap code tutorials, plenty more, then head on over to hellolux.com and um, we will be adding uh, more and more tutorials on a very regular basis. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.